In this video, we're going to be talking about related rates. So let's kind of introduce the idea of related rates with this first example. So we're told the variables x and y are both differentiable functions of the variable t, which is generally used for time, and are related by the equation y equals 3x squared. So this equation here is uh, the relationship between x and y, and both of these are differentiable functions with respect to t. So if I want to find the derivative of y with respect to t when x equals 2, given that the derivative of x with respect to t is 4 at that moment, at a specific moment in time when x is 2. Um, so we generally will be asked to, uh, in related rate questions, find some rate at a specific value. And that's what we have going on here. So we want to find dy dt. Uh, when we're given that x is 2 um, and that the derivative of x with respect to t is 4. So the first thing that we need to do is take the derivative of our function with respect to t. So remember, whenever you take the derivative uh, with respect to a variable that is not the variable that we are given or that we're taking the derivative of, we always have to use the chain rule and multiply by the derivative of whatever our variable is with respect to whatever variable we're differentiating with respect to. So in this case, we're differentiating x and y with respect to t. So when I take the derivative of y, it's going to be the derivative of y with respect to t, right? So derivative of y is 1 times this dy dt by the chain rule. Uh, the derivative of 3x squared is just going to be 6x. But again, because x is not t, we have to multiply by the derivative of x with respect to t, because we're differentiating with respect to t here. Now it's asking me to find dy dt, which I have right here. And it tells me when x is 2 and then when the rate that x is changing with respect to t is 4. So now I can just do some simple substitution and plug in my uh, numbers in to those values there. So this will tell me that the derivative of y with respect to t is going to equal uh, 6 times 2. So that's the value of x. And then the rate at which x was changing was 4. It doesn't give us units here, but then you can just multiply all this out. Uh, so 12 times 4 is 48, whatever units we would have. So this is kind of how related rates are going to work. Um, related rates are generally asking us to find a specific rate at uh, some time because we have variables that are changing with respect to time. So in order to solve related rates, we want to kind of follow these six steps uh, to kind of help us work through these problems. So the first thing that is vitally important is that we draw a picture. Often it helps us get a better idea of what the question is asking us. In a lot of these examples, you'll be given a picture, but that will not always be the case. And another thing that you want to do is identify your variables and anything that is a constant. And we're going to use t to represent time. We want to write down any of our given information uh, using the variables that we had defined in the first step. Then we want to write down what is it that we're asked to find, right? What are we asked to find? Generally, this is going to be some rate expressed as a derivative. And then the whole thing that kind of makes this a uh, whole section happen is write an equation that relates the variables that we were given. Uh, this is why it's called related rates. It's because we have to be able to find some equation that relates the variables that we're given based on what we know in our prior knowledge. A lot of times that will be volume formulas, area formulas, things like the Pythagorean theorem, trig identities, uh, like trig ratios and such. And uh, all of those things are fair game and come into play when dealing with related rates. And then once we have all of that, we are going to differentiate our equation with respect to t, plug in all the information we know, and evaluate. So let's go ahead and jump in and take a look at some examples of this so we can see kind of how all of this works. So in this first example, it's asking us, um, let's kind of walk, read the problem first, and then we'll go in. So it says air is being pumped into a spherical balloon, so into a spherical balloon, at a rate of five cubic centimeters per minute. Now, generally, when you see any sort of 
a measurement cubed. That's giving us, uh, telling us that we're dealing with volume here. And then it says, determine the rate at which the radius of the balloon is increasing when the diameter of the balloon is 20 centimeters, 20 centimeters. Okay, so this that we're given here is um, the rate at which the volume is changing. So the rate at which the volume is changing, we will represent as dv dt. So it's the derivative, or sorry, it's the rate at which the volume changes with respect to time. So this is five centimeters cubed uh, per minute. And we wanna find the rate at which the radius is changing. So we wanna find the rate at which the radius changes with respect to time. Okay. So what are we dealing with here? So it says a spherical balloon. So a spherical balloon. So let me just quickly draw a sphere here. Um, so we're gonna have something like this. Um, and then, let me see. So we have this here. All right, so we have a sphere here and then um, all right, sorry about that, give me one second. So here's a sphere, right? And we're told that the radius, the radius of this is, actually we're given information about the diameter, um, but we need to find the rate at which the radius is changing. So we're gonna be cu uh, curious about the radius. So if the diameter is 20 centimeters, this tells me that the radius is 10 centimeters, um, 10 centimeters. Okay, so what is an equation that relates the volume to the radius for a sphere? Well, generally when you're dealing with a sphere, right, we only really have one equation for volume. So we know that the volume of a sphere is four thirds pi times the radius cubed. So this is the equation for the volume. Uh, so I need to uh, try and take the derivative of this, right, because I'm going to need to get a uh, derivative of v with respect to t, and I'm going to need to find a derivative of r with respect to t. So to get that, I'm going to have to differentiate this. And then I'm going to have to substitute in all of the information that we're given uh, to find the rate at which the radius changes at uh, when it is 10, when the radius is 10 centimeters. All right, so let's go ahead and take the derivative here. So taking the derivative, again, we're taking, we're differentiating this with respect to time, right? differentiating this with respect to time. So the derivative of the volume, so that's gonna be dv dt, right? Because the derivative of one v is just one uh, and we're differentiating with respect to time. So we have to put it over dt equals, uh, this four thirds pi is just a constant. So it's gonna be multiplying everything that we have here. Um, the, deriv the derivative of r cubed is gonna be three r squared. So it's gonna be four thirds pi times three r squared. But since we're taking the derivative of r, which is not a t, we have to multiply by the derivative of r with respect to t. And nicely we see that we have this three here that can cancel with that three. And now we wanna just isolate our dr dt. So we have four pi times r squared times dr dt equals dv dt. Since we wanna isolate this, I'm gonna actually do that first and then substitute. So I can divide everything by uh, four pi r squared or multiply by the reciprocal of that. So dv dt times one over four pi r squared is gonna equal the rate at which our radius changes uh, with respect to time. So now, when is it that we're trying to evaluate this rate? So it happens when the radius is 10 centimeters. So I can plug in 10 here, and since the volume is changing at a constant rate, it doesn't have, uh, it's not dependent on when this is happening. So I can plug in all that information right now. So the rate at which the volume is changing with respect to time is five, so it's five times. Uh, actually, we can just say five over, right? Five over uh, four pi, times r, which is 100, uh, 10 squared, so that's gonna be 100, and that's gonna be equal to dr dt. 
so this tells me that the rate at which the radius is changing with respect to time is going to equal um, five goes in. So this is going to be one over 80 pi, one over 80 pi, which if you plug that into your calculator, uh, what would we get here? So we can go ahead and plug this into our calculator. So we get one divided by 80 pi is going to give us about 0 0.00397 or 398. Um, and then this is going to be, since we're talking about the radius, the radius is going to be a linear measure. So it's going to be centimeters per, what is our units in time, minutes, centimeters per minute. Uh, if we wanted to, we could uh, keep only up to the three decimal places, right? Because that's what they want for the AP test. So you could say this is 0 0.004 centimeters per minute. Um, or you could truncate it and just cut it off at, say, 0 0.003 centimeters per minute. And so that would be this first example. Um, I'm actually going to skip examples two and uh, sorry three and four for right now and I will come back to these two in the next video but I want to jump into example five at this point so let's go ahead and take a look at example five it says a tank of water in the shape of a cone so we have a cone is leaking water at a constant rate of two cubic feet per hour the radius of the base of the tank is five feet. So the radius is five feet and the height is 14 feet. At what rate is the depth of the water in the tank changing when the depth of the water is six feet? Okay, so there's a lot kind of going on here. They already gave us this, um, this picture here, this diagram, but we can go ahead and kind of try and unpack all of this. So again, we're dealing with a cubic, a cubic um, measurement here. So this is telling me that we're dealing with volume. So this is going to be my volume, the rate at which my volume changes with respect to time. So dv dt is going to be uh, now because it's leaking, right? Because it's leaking, my volume is decreasing. So that rate is actually going to be negative. The rate is going to be negative. So it's negative two. And what tells us that is that it's leaking. So the volume is decreasing. Um, and then we want to know the rate at which the depth of the water. So the depth is a, the same as the height. This is just the height of the water. So I want to know dH dt. What is that? So I need to find an equation that relates the volume with the height. And we're dealing with a cone. So what is the volume equation for the volume of a cone? So the volume of a cone is one third pi times the radius squared times h. Now we have a problem here because the volume of a cone has both an r and an h in it. And we can't have that. We need this to only be in terms of height and volume. So what we need to do right now is try and find a way to relate the radius to the height. And luckily we have some information that's gonna help us do that. Um, so in this diagram, if we were to take a cross section of our cone, this is what it would look like. And we're fortunate because we have a similar triangle situation here, right? So we have this triangle here. Whoops, let's see. Uh, we have this tri triangle here. So let's see if it actually makes a triangle this time. Perfect. Um, so this triangle here that we can use to try and uh, use similar triangles with this, whoops, come on, with this smaller triangle here. So we have, stop changing colors on me. Thank you. Now let's pick this. There we go. So there's that triangle. And then there's this smaller triangle that we have right here. Um, like this. So those two triangles are similar triangles and we can try and find a relationship between the radius and the height using those, uh, that proportion. Okay. So we can set up the proportion of R compared to the, the radius in our small triangle compared to the radius in our large triangle. 
and the height in our small, small triangle compared to the height in our large triangle. So it would be r over 5 is equal to h over 14. Now we're trying to get rid of r, so we want this to be equal to r. So multiply both sides by 5, and we get that r is equal to 5h over 14. Okay, so now we can take this and substitute it in for r, and we can rewrite our equation. So let's go ahead and substitute in for r. So we will get that v equals 1 third pi times 5h uh, over 14, that quantity squared, times h. Okay, so if we do all of this, we're going to get that our new equation is going to be 1 third pi times uh, 25 over 196. This is going to be h squared times h, so it's going to be h cubed. All right. So now this is the equation that we're going to have to differentiate. Because when I take the derivative here of v, that'll give me my dv dt. When I take the derivative here of h, that's going to give me my dh dt because we're differentiating this with respect to time. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So taking the derivative, the derivative of v is just 1 times the dv dt equals, so this 1 third, all of this here, 1 third pi times 25 over 196, that is all constant. Um, so we have 25 pi over 196 times 3 times uh, the derivative of h cubed is going to be 3h squared times the derivative of h with respect to t. And actually, kind of nicely, we have the 3 and the 3 here cancel. Sorry, clean this up a little bit. This is the derivative of h with respect to t. So those, uh, those threes cancel, and we are left with uh, 25 pi h squared. So this is telling me that the derivative of v with respect to t is equal to 25 pi h squared over 196 times dh dt. And actually, I want to solve for dh dt, so I'm just going to do that right now by multiplying by the reciprocal of all of this to both sides. So I'm going to get that the derivative of h with respect to t is equal to the derivative of v with respect to t times the reciprocal of all of that. So that's 196 over uh, 25 pi times h squared. And now we can substitute in all the information that we know. So we know that this is happening uh, when the depth, remember we said the depth is this, the depth here is the same as h. So when the depth is six feet, we know the rate at which the volume changes. Uh, so this is going to be negative 2 times 196 all over 25 pi times 6 squared is 36. Sorry, 36. Um, and the units for this, it's the rate at which the height changes. So the height is linear, is going to be feet per hour. So if you go in and you plug all this into your calculator, uh, you're going to get that the derivative, the rate at which the height changes, the rate at which the height changes with respect to time is going to be negative 0 0.139 feet per hour, feet per hour. So this is the rate at which the height changes with respect to time. So that's that there. Um, so that would be that rate there.